Hi everybody, this is Chris at Mardave. Um, today we will be uh, going through the Cobra Eco and Cobra Evo Sport uh, models and getting the bits and pieces out of the box and showing you uh, some of the new changes. This car I've got here is the uh, Evo model with the mid motor mount and new geometry front end. This chassis um, has a few little changes to it. We've got the new crackle paint on the chassis. This will be available over the next two or three months. We're going to evaluate and see how strong it is and whether it scratches up uh, quicker than the normal powder coated one. But as you can see, mid-engined, carbon fiber shock towers, front and rear, we have a carbon block on the front with a new geometry and we've got the uh, big bore shock absorbers on also and the new position for the uh, LiPo battery mount. The only thing that's missing off of here is the uh, carbon motor mount, uh, motor plate which um, comes in all of the uh, Evo kits and we give you a Delrin gear. This is a different type of slipper clutch which we've been testing. So let's get started. So in the box you get the shell, comes with a um, overspray mask, film on the outside. You get your window mask set and your wing, a set of front wheels, rear wheels and tyres. Obviously these are standard kit tyres. Um, some of you will be wanting to go racing seriously and there are a massive range of tyres on the market uh, for you to buy. We also do a hex drive conversion for the uh, Evo and the um, Eco if you want to put hex drive wheels on the back and we also do a conversion for the front. Um, these are aftermarket parts um, from another car so if you wish to add them check out the website and all the information's on there. Um, get a bag of bits and pieces and a part built chassis. The reason we do put these parts onto the chassis, gearboxes um, we put together. The idea around it is just make sure that everything is all bedded in nicely, the diffs built nicely. Um, one thing I will add is the side screws where you screw the two gearboxes together try not to pinch these too tight. If you tighten them up too tight, you will bind up the gearbox. So just when you've taken it apart or putting it back together, when you tighten up the, the screws, there's two at the bottom and three at the top. When you put them together, just make sure you haven't bound up the gearbox and everything moves nice and freely. So that's mounted. Carbon fiber um, motor plate is also on there and you've got on the front your carbon uh, support, shock towers and um, suspension arm mounts. We have noticed that a couple of the screws don't 100% line up. Now, we're not sure 100% why this is. It could be that we're using M3 screws instead of um, the old cheese head countersunk screws with a like a, a, a coarse thread so what we've done is we've tapped the holes into the plastic and we've mounted it on there but yeah just something to be aware of we're looking into it so that's your chassis plate that comes in the bag also a big bag of goodies but we'll start with one so slipper clutch the slipper clutch has a pin, there's an instruction book in there, there's a little tiny pin 
which goes through the lay shaft and then you prop your gear on with this slot over the pin. You then have your spring washers, which there's a diagram in the instruction book. These go over the top and your little cap, and then it all goes on as an assembly and a nut goes on and adjust to the tension. So in the instruction book, um, from the old Cobra Sport, there is a breakdown of how that all goes together and how to adjust it. Your servo saver pack, you get servo saver, all of the linkages and posts. As per on here, you can just see all the linkages. I've got silver linkages. Um, all of the new updated ones are all blackened. Um, you get a linkage to your servo. Um, this is a servo saver, so there's no need to put a big servo saver onto your servo. You can just use a, an arm. All of the fittings are in the bag. There's a body post. Now, body post can be positioned in lots of different places. Now, you've got in the front of the car, you've got like a little nick, which is where your body shell comes through and you can put a body clip onto there. On the back, there are a couple of holes either side. You can mount your body post either side or if you wish to, um, some people have drilled a hole into the center of the chassis and had the post coming up and coming out of the center of the shell. The trouble is the shell has got like a little ridge down the center so getting the body shell post to come up through the center is a bit of a pain. Something we're going to modify on the next mold, we're going to take this out so you've got a nice flat place to mount the rear body post. You then have your rear suspension bag. In there you've got all of the um, suspension hubs, we've put the balls in place these holes have been tapped and no need to put a nut on the other side. You've got your wishbones, all of your hinge pins, your drive um, cups, bearings and pins. Like I said quite a bit of this is in the instruction booklet if you have any questions feel free to drop me a message and we can um, sort that out. That's the drive shafts. So that's the rear suspension parts. Front suspension bag, very, very similar. You've got your wishbones. You get another bag, which is the longer pivots um, arms. These are to go on here. Now we give you both types. You can use the front plate. Some people want to use it and mount it onto the front holes in the uh, shock tower and do away with this. Some people that want to go in and race it iconic, they have to have the links to the front here and then they turn the gearbox round so you can make your Evo into an Eco and you can run it in the iconic series. So we've given you both lots of links in the bag. Um, your suspension parts, your C-hubs. Um, we were waiting and hopefully adding the new pin drives into the C-hubs, but there's been a delay in the parts. So we've had to go with what we originally said. You've got the press, press in pins. As soon as the other ones become available, I'll email everybody and we can arrange um, a way of um, letting you have them at a reduced price. These are pins which you will have to drill the C-hub and the steering hub to take the bigger pins. So it's an option. You may want to do it, you may not want to. We've put the ball joints in with the raised um, supports to eliminate some of the bump steer that we were having on the original car. All linkages, ball joints, ball stubs, 
front wheel bearings are all in this front end bag. One thing I will add is on the sh front wishbone you have a slot. Now the big bore shock absorbers have um, a ball which is pressed into the end of the shock absorber and that has to go into that slot. Now some of them are quite tight to get in there so what I've done is I've taken a scalpel and just relieved the fatter side of the wishbone just so that they drop in and then you put the screw in from the side. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see it on the bottom of this car. There's, it goes in between that slot and this ball, the silver ball, is quite fat. So just alleviate this slot towards the fatter end and then this ball joint will go in nice and easy. So that's the front end bag. You've then got your LiPo holder, pretty self-explanatory. Um, you have two, two parts, left and right. You have posts which go in, so the screw comes through the post, a nut goes onto the top, and the elastic band goes over to hold your LiPo in place. The rear shock tower, because the gearbox is already mounted onto the car, you get a nice carbon mount. This goes onto the back of the car, like so, with two screws which are in the bag. And you get the uh, wing mount set, which all assembles onto the back of the car. All screws and fixings. And if you can just see how that goes on, there's two screws that go through the back onto the wing mount and two little buttons through the top to hold the wing in place. And finally, you have your shock absorbers. Now originally, we were going to get all of the shock absorbers um, supplied, already filled um, and ready to go, just pop onto the car, but our good friends supplied us all unbuilt shocks and it was going to take another couple of weeks to get them all built for us. So the majority of the kits will come, um, so you're going to have to assemble them. There's a little set of instructions in there and what shock absorber oil to use. Um, they just need to be assembled and added onto the car. Very different springs available. These are all Schumacher big bore shocks, so available from the website uh, or the Schumacher website. Um, so there you have it. This is the uh, Cobra Evo stroke Cobra Eco. Um, I hope you've uh, found the video helpful in the build. If you would like any further information, you can drop me an email, go on to YouTube and follow us on YouTube because we have some setup tips coming out shortly, uh, along with the development parts that we have got planned for the Eco, i.e. the front end, uh, hex drive, the rear hex drive, and we have got a C-Hub arrangement which we've um, uh, taken from another car uh, to save on tooling costs, which allow you to have hex drives on the front, so you can run hex wheels front and rear, um, or you want to keep it vintage, as in, as it came in the box. I think that's everything. Radio gear, as you can see, some people will lay it out slightly differently. That's the way I've had it in the car since we started testing and works for me. I hope you enjoy the video. Speak to you soon and uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you can for further updates. Thanks very much and see you soon.